What's up, guys? Welcome back to the 31 Days of Jay's Hober. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do a React series, but you know what's funny? These kind of get repetitive and stuff. So every single time we try and make uh, some sort of a theme or whatever, I didn't do that this time. I just used hashtag on Twitter, Jay, what do you think October? And I was like, guys, show me what you got. You know, show us what you got for all you Rick and Morty fans out there. Um, I just want to see what kind of cool and interesting setups you guys had. So I know it's gonna feel very natural to want to like hate and be mad at these people that they have these setups, especially while you're waiting on your stuff, but use it like we do, it's inspiration. We see the way some of these people do stuff and we were like, I, that was really simple and it looks awesome, why didn't I, didn't I think of that? So that's the point of these videos. So without further ado, let's go ahead and pay some bills around here and then let's see what we got. The all-new Z20 mechanical gaming keyboard from EVGA features optical mechanical switches available in clicky or linear versions, TOF sensor, 4 kHz report rate, and media controls, making it a great choice for multi-purpose setups. To learn more and to see the full list of features of the new Z20 from EVGA, click the link in the description below. Okay, so first up we got William Kelly here. Uh, his specs are an OG IKEA Gallant, already one of my favorite tables in the day, had good support, didn't sag, it was expandable. Discon discontinued. It's like, why did IKEA take one of their best desks and discontinue it and replace it with a Beckett, which sucks. But anyway, moving on. Hardware is a bit older, but it gets the job done. 8600K, cooled with an H100i Elite, 1070 Ti FE, 16 gigs of DDR4. He has an NVMe drive, two terabyte hard drive, et cetera. But what's cool about this, look, he's got like this entire terrarium kind of a thing going. Like at, at first, it almost looks like, like an aquarium tank that you would have for like a snake. I don't know what that's called. It's obviously not an aquarium, but you know, you have like the little tree and stuff in there that snakes could slither around. It looks like a snake terrarium kind of a thing. He even has, he's carried it along around the fans and stuff here. I mean, I try not to, to I guess, let my personal taste influence how I feel about a personal person's build. This is simple, yet effective. Now you might look at the tower and be like, what's the point of this? He's got these nice polished river rocks down there. I probably use the stuff you would go to like a reptile store and to the, the reptile stuff that goes in there, but anyway, <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Well, I, I, this is the kind of stuff I expect to see in like a yeah. lizard cage or something. But if you go to the entire setup, <clears throat> you can see it really ties in with the whole nature thing here. We've got a lot of wood tones happening here. Um, we've got a lot of plants happening here. We've got some natural light coming in from the window. It really does feel like a super cozy space. I kind of wish I could see a perspective from the chair facing the other way. I'm curious as to what the rest of the room looks like, but this is, I guess the kind of setup I imagine that he always has like a a jungle or like a bird chirping track always going. Like imagine I hear like crickets and birds just kind of constantly going here. I mean, he even said right here, he has a he has a follow-up video that I'll play here in a sec. He says, I know you're probably tired of O11 Dynamics though. I am, they're absolutely played out, but he he made it look cool. Like here's the video. Yeah, I love all the little details. Like the fact that he wrapped the vines around the tubes into the fans. Anyway, good job, William. Yes, O11 Dynamic, but I like it. All right, so this is Haydar? Hadar? Cohen? Sorry if I messed up your name. So that's my current setup, mostly for content consumption and a bit of gaming. I've never, like, I guess content consumption is a thing. If you like to watch a lot of people play streams and stuff, you're sitting at your computer for hours watching, so you might as well make it comfortable. Second monitor is DIY from an old laptop. So why, the reason why I chose this one is he took parts and repurposed them in a way that we didn't even realize until we started looking closer at the photos after he mentioned it. That's how well it was done. Maybe in the future, I will upgrade to bookshelf speakers and mount them on the sides of the clock. So very basic set, very bright room, by the way. White walls, white shelving. These are Ikea shelves, Ikea table, uh, countertop, Ikea, uh, Ikea, Ikea um, Alex drawers, a very light, wood flooring, whether it's faux wood or real wood, I'm not sure, but really light colored. He brings warmth to the setup with the wood tones, with the white. If those were white tops, this would be like a doctor's office. It would just be way too sterile looking. But if we look at this, you can see we've got wall-mounted speaker uh, monitors. He's got the Harman Kardon uh, speaker sticks, right? What were they called? Sound sticks. Sound, Sound sticks, sticks with so the cool. clear sub down there. I mean, those are old. They're actually really old, Yeah. but they look cool because they're transparent and stuff. Um, so let's get to the DIY stuff here. This monitor on the left is actually, oh, okay, cable management. Look, he's got a PS4 mounted under the desk, which is awesome. He's got everything nice and tidy. He's got the little stick on clips. So you can get these little clips that kind of like 
Some will sort of twist together and snap like that to stay or open. Or you can have the ones that just have a channel that overlap like that. And they're just two-sided sticky tape, that really strong 3M tape. And you can see he used those under here because there is no cable management underneath a countertop. Uh, he did that all around. So he's got his charger brick over here for the laptop and such. He's got a hub over here or network, network switch maybe. Beautiful. Yeah, he's got the mounted power strip. It all comes through the channel on the wall. Really, really well thought out. Even the placement of the speaker's width is placed properly here for this plug. But if we come over here now and look at the top down, this, as you can see, is a laptop monitor that he came up with a VESA mount for. And you can see all of the guts of the monitor essentially right here, which would have been in the laptop, mounted to the back of it so he has a second monitor. So rather than go out and spend money and uh, on trying to buy another monitor, spend hundreds of dollars on a monitor, he probably spent minimal amount of parts and standoffs just to repurpose something he, had, he already had, which I think is awesome. Now he's got more photo, photos here of the system. The mini PC itself is laptop component. So it's an i9-9980HK, which is no slouch of a CPU, a GTX 1650, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 EVO, NVMe, et cetera, et cetera. He, know, he says, I know it's unbalanced, but it's about $10 upgrade from the i7 to the i9. So we went for the eight core. He managed to fit it all into an ITX case and it isn't stock. So here are the guts of the laptop. You got the blower coolers here and it's just all sitting in this all aluminum mini ITX chassis. So, there it is from the other side. I, don't, I forget which case this is, but this whole setup is clearly capable of doing 1080p gaming and it looks like that. And it's nearly all repurposed parts. So that's where I give these major kudos and clearly he likes Air Jordans because there's a box right there. But anyway, I digress. Okay, so Ben Smith sends us his setup here. And the reason why I chose this one is it shows a really good practical use of limited space. I'm sure a lot of you have either, whether you be in a dorm room, if you're in college, you got limited space there, or you're still living at home with your parents and you've got a, a bedroom that you have to have living space and gaming space if that's your setup, or you have a small apartment or something and you don't have a, a place to dedicate a big giant desk like I'm used to doing. So you see people come up with really creative ways to utilize what available space they have in their setup. So that's why I liked Ben Smith here. He says, I finally seen one in time and he made it. You're famous now. My corner as it sits at the moment, it's a tough X570 3900X 3080 Ti FE with EK Special Edition water block. That's it. That's it. And it's not much, but it's his. <laughs> Samsung G9 monitor, Logitech G650 and RG uh, KB and Sp Spatha mouse. But this is Spatha. That's a Spatha. So you can see here, he's got this between this wall and these under stairs area. Now this isn't exactly the smallest setup. But I like the fact how he still incorporated a display shelf here, which has his subwoofer. Um, he's got some other like, looks like a little shelf standoff here. So you can see he, he put these little standoffs under the shelf to raise it up. So he had room to put, uh, I forget what this is called, but this is from a video game underneath it. He still has room for his controller, his motorcycle model here. He clearly likes motorcycles. You can tell by his helmet and stuff. Very wide monitor, but he incorporated the L shape here that sticks out into the room, but not terrible. You can see these are clearly stairs. And we got a little like baby gate or pet gate here to keep you from going up, but the stairs go this way and then they turn and go right above. So the only downside about that spot right there is if you have kids like mine that come down the stairs like an elephant, then you're just gonna hear boom, 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 boom. So you're under the desk or under the staircase, but that's fine. The setup is extremely clean. So here it is from another perspective right there. I mean, he's got his tower here, which is pretty awesome. Uh, it's the Antec Torque with pinstriping. So it's a white torque that he did the black pinstriping on. Look at the water cooling. Like he spent some time on this. This is pretty awesome. All the white fluid, the white block. Phil also loved this one. He believes he resubmitted in the past because Phil responded to him about the gauntlet and he made the gauntlet give Phil the middle finger. So he was happy about that. But look, he built the sensor panel. And since there's nowhere to really mount it here, I think that matched his theme. He just has the gauntlet holding the sensor panel. And all those, all those Raspberry Pi screens need is USB power and HDMI cable. So he's clearly got those routed right here underneath going down under the desk. So he's got the Thanos gauntlet, which is a Lego gauntlet. Just Outstanding move. Hold, yeah, Nick <laughs> says standing move. Just Outstanding holding. move. Huh? Outstanding, Outstanding move. Outstanding. So I just, I thought that this was such a clever use of space and design, and look, there's no cables visible anywhere in this system. Okay, fine, right here, you got one behind the laptop, you got a couple behind the gauntlet, whatever. No such thing as a completely wireless setup. All right, Ben, awesome setup, man. This next setup here comes to us from John Zimmerman. 
uh, I chose this one because I felt like it was simple, yet modern, but classy, if that makes sense. I have been finding people sending me setup photos that have black walls for a while now. And black walls are not something I ever really, like medium gray is about as dark as I would ever go on a wall. But the more I see people show me setups with black walls, the more I'm just like, I love the fact that it brings all of your attention to either any color you've added or the wood tones. So his specs are right here. You can read them and pause if you want, because I want to spend time talking about the setup. So from the front view here, black walls, white, white roof, but black walls. We've got a TV here. We've got his sound panels behind, which are not hexagon shape and they're not the, uh, you know, zigzag like you would typically find. So I feel like this already makes the space look unique. A black NZXT case, black gaming mat, black peripherals, everything's just black. And it's actually the same uh, key gaming keyboard I have from Logitech, which is wireless. Blue just looks so good on the black wall. It just absorbs all that color and you can see it. It's very rich and vibrant. But the medium wood tone just like gives you a touch of class. And if you haven't noticed right here, he painted the PS5 black. So he actually took the time to paint his PS5 black to match the setup. Cause obviously a white PS5 black trim would be clashy in this right here. Um, take a look at another photo here. Check this out. He's actually got this foot roller massager. So you put this underneath like the arches of your feet and you just kind of roll it back and forth. So you're giving yourself like a foot massage while you're sitting at your desk. He's got his Go XLR sitting right here in the center. Um, the, even the studio monitors like perfectly fit this setup here. Sure SM7B, black arm, even the chair. I mean, this is just a super clean setup. And the nice thing is the black walls really do make the, the cable start to blend in. So here's, a, here's this tower, just simple white lighting with all black stuff. But like any setup, I do have one small piece of advice that I think could actually make quite a bit of difference here from this one perspective. You can buy black switch covers and you can buy black sockets. So if you really wanted to black this out, I would just go down to Home Depot, buy a black switch cover, right? And then, and then call, it end of the, call it a day because then it wouldn't be standing out on the wall when with the exception of your baseboards, nothing else is, is black. Oh, here's, here it is with the blue lighting, which obviously looks a lot better than the white because he's got this black and blue theme going on. But you can see how all this darkness which would have looked like a bat cave otherwise, is just completely balanced by the one medium wood tone. Now, you could go with a dark wood tone and it would look amazing as well. Uh, but I feel like this gave a nice, just a touch of warmth that made it look amazing. He spent a lot of time on his cable management. He's got this, uh, the retro, it's actually an LED that's designed to look like an old uh, Edison bulb. But no, it's definitely modern sophisticated, but if we want to go to like what I felt was modern sophisticated, then Wesley Coward's Coward setup. This would be modern sophistication as far as I'm concerned. You have this symmetry going on here. So you've got one, the larger panel, well, at least one of them is vertical on either side, but they're mirrored. And then you've got the horizontal on the outsides. And what I like about this is this isn't the traditional, let's use Ikea tabletop or countertops with legs and use an Alex drawer for support. This is some other type of desk that he sourced clearly that's got natural wood tops with grain. Uh, seahorse type legs on one side and then it still supports itself it looks like on the alex stores right here but the wood tones on the floor like tie in really well to the wood tones on the table i feel like he should stain these bookshelves to match because i i do feel like the slight lighter tone this is like a medium and this is a dark pulls away from a little bit from all the tie-in, but you could stain these, you know, and, and definitely make them. And you can make these, these types of floating shelves yourself, by the way. So you can just go into Home Depot, ask for the galvanized pipe and the, the mount for it like that, which is designed to mount into any wall. It's just, this is just regular masonry type stuff. And you can, as you see, mount it into studs, put a nice little cap on there, paint it, distress it, do whatever you want to it, and then just put a piece of wood along it. As long as the wood's not warped, it'll lay flat or put a lot of weight like books on it. This is the view from his, his Dell work set. As I love his work from home setup. He actually has an Elgato key light with a DSLR webcam. This is a guy that's like, you know what? If I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it right. None of this crappy webcam quality with Mike says the same thing. John, you want to call? Okay, John, you want to call? I said, group We've all been in those Zoom calls where you're just like, Get a mic. If we look at the other setup, he's got obviously a much better mic uh, on there. He's got a Scarlett 
He's got his Elgato stream deck on there. He's got his DAC over here. Or not his DAC, but his amp and stuff over here. Another face cam. What's funny is he's actually not using the DSLR over here on the streaming setup, the game streaming setup, because I, I'm not sure which camera this is. Any point and shoot type Sony camera or Canon camera is gonna look better than any webcam. And he's obviously capturing it through a capture card. And then the tower, in my opinion, nothing super special to write home about. Um, he used soft tubing with some interesting bend choices. It's not the cleanest look in my opinion. That can always be rectified at a later time. But in terms of the setup though, when you just look at it, when you walk in the room right there, that's just, I don't, it's so basic, but clean. I feel like the mic is mounted right in the middle so he could switch it for work oh, or yeah. for streaming. Yeah, which perfectly makes which is sense. It's pretty neat. Yeah, so you could swing it over here or swing it over there. I mean, maybe there's a switch over here then. He has the XLR switch going into one or the other. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it has to be connected to one PC. Uh, maybe he can comment to his own thread about how this mic set up. Is this mic only connected here and is he only using the headset over here? Because he's got a headset over here. All right, so not all setups come, that you come in here are necessarily showroom ready. So we like to give suggestions where we can. And Sigma sent us his setup. He said it's his first build. He's a little bit, a little bit of how it's been evolving over time. So these photos are going to be different because they're kind of like an evolution here. He works and plays in a basement. The blanket on the floor is to keep my feet from getting cold. No judging. You submitted for judgment, my friend. Let's go with the before. Cue horror music. <laughs> okay, it's a basement. It's clearly cinder block and painted. I would already, if this were me and this was my space and I was allowed to do what I want down here, I don't know what your situation is. I don't know if you own the home, if you rent the home, if you uh, are living with someone that, like maybe you're at your parents. I do not know the situation here. I personally feel like I would be gaming in a prison right here. This feels very prison holding cell like. Don't ask me how I know I've never been to prison, but I've seen plenty of scared straight videos. The wiring. Obviously there's nothing to be said here. We all are thinking it. But wiring is something that people sometimes just need a little help with. So if we start scrolling through, Yes, he started zip tying stuff together. So we've got, oh, take this, pick, take the part stickers off of the furniture. Like when it's like part K and part D and part I, you don't have to leave those stickers on. Um, he zip tied stuff together, but random stuff is still just sort of like floating around wherever. Um, this is zip tied to the leg. So cable management aside, let's just talk safety here. I mean, if this is done right, it should be a grounded box anyway. It doesn't matter. We are trying to figure out where this goes. This, this is clearly the, the lead that leads these plugs right here and gives them power. I do believe it's this cable right here coming off the bottom of what appears to be this cable right here. So they, see how it comes off of this plug? That clearly is the plug coming out because there's a wood patch right where they have the wires coming through and stuff. That's just dangling this box. Now, go down to Home Depot, get yourself a concrete bit, Unplug this, if, okay, if you know what you're doing with electrical, otherwise hire an electrician, please. Open the box, put it against the wall, draw holes of where the mounting holes are for the backside of that J box, or that, that junction box there for the, for the power cables, or for the plugs. Get yourself a $10 concrete bit and a drill, and put anchors in the wall and mount it to the wall. Okay, anything like that should not be floating around. That's just safety 101. Cable management, you don't have a lot going on under here that you can mount to, so maybe it'd be worth getting yourself some of those Ikea under desk like cages that you can mount and just use little tapper screws to hold it up there. You don't have to worry about zip tying everything together like this, because if you have to change something out and everything is zip tied and taped together, that is a complete nightmare as well. Go to Walmart and get yourself a $30 five by seven rug and put it down underneath this. Your feet won't be cold and it won't look like it won't look like the floor of something from, Go from Ghost Adventure. This is just epoxy that's been peeling up and stuff, and I get that it's cold down there and you want to protect your feet. Uh, rugs are cheap. You can get some cheap, cheap rugs. The only thing super special down there, put your desk on it, put your chair on it, call it a day. Your feet will stay, it won't get cold from touching the floor and you won't have to look at this. Also, before you take photos, like throw away your bottles and your trash and stuff. You get it, you like hint, and you might want to do. You'd be surprised what just a simple amount of labor and, and money, like a small amount of money and a small amount of time and labor can do for making the setup look great. I hate the cable management. You need uh, cable ties. 
He's like, I know that's what it's before and after. It's not perfect because it's better. This isn't after. This is still during. <laughs> you're you're always gonna be constantly evolving your desk setup. Like Oh yeah. It, I wanna change it, mine all around at home again. Yeah, mine too. Like it's never gonna you're never gonna have like a well you will have like you a You start to pause. realize like this wasn't the most efficient use of the space. I could do this and this and this. And you don't know that until you start using it and then you find it's fine. Yeah, faults. exactly. Um so this one's from Caleb Wood. Hey Jay, hope you like the setup. Took many hours, but I think you'll appreciate the effort. Um, just This is one that it clearly looks like it's some sort of a bedroom, or maybe a basement. And the reason why I think that is because of the drop ceiling. You don't tend to find drop ceilings in houses that are not basement level. Drop ceiling tends to be a quick way to just hide all the underfloor joists and stuff. So that, that tends to be more common. I'm one of those people that like shape, busy shapes on walls kind of makes me really like feel nervous and anxiety. I don't know what it's called, there's a condition for that. So lighting it from the side only intensifies the shape, which makes me feel awkward, but it's a cool viewing setup. I think it's an interesting choice of position for the couch to have this be the viewing setup here because of the fact that you don't, like you're not facing it. Cause right, I have a, I have a viewing area in my room where my couch faces the TV and the, and the stand and all that because I had to really look at this and go, I would love to put my computer on that wall, but then I'd be perpendicular like you're dealing with here to if I put the TV on the other wall, then I'm gonna have a desk here and a couch coming out towards it, and that's not gonna make sense. So I made choices on flow here. I'm wondering if where the where the, the wall is, or the door is, if it was possible to build your PC set up here, and then the viewer set up here. Oh yeah, he's doing the, the triple long, so that's why he did it that way. I wish we could see the rest of the room, which is clearly more happening over there. But I wanted to give him props because of his uh, amazing cable management. You can see from the various angles here, can't see any wires and stuff dangling down. And that's not an easy setup to do because again, these countertops, you have zero cable management in that, zero. And so you've got to come up with it on your own and he clearly did a good job here. And look at the way he did the nano leaf right here in this channel, the wire coming straight down. It follows the, the vertical lines happening with like the monitors and stuff to where you don't even really notice it until you look for it. Great job. All right, so Zandras sends us his uh, PC Borger. Now, I haven't seen one of these in a while, actually. There weren't very many of these. It was more of a Kickstarter project. Uh, it's the Cal 5700G. Now, it's all integrated. So everything is actually inside the 5700G. It doesn't use a lot of power. It doesn't take a lot of digestive strength. And so you're able to get more for your money on that one. 512 gigabytes of uh, B.2 Tomate. That is something I probably wouldn't have done personally myself. I'm not exactly a fan of Tomate. The cheese thermal paste, I probably would have doubled up on that. So if you're running specifically the, the, the cheese thermal paste, in my opinion, I'd rather having it oozing off the sides. It's not gonna hurt anything if it touches it. It may not be so pretty, but in terms of performance, you're gonna notice it. Not enough, it's dry, things get hot. Uh, it just, it's, it's hard to swallow when you do that. The 16 gigabytes of SRAM, SRAM 5 is actually coming out very, very soon. So you're gonna find that just, you might have kind of like shot too soon on this one. And you're gonna see the performance of SRAM 5 versus SRAM 4. And 16 gigabytes of SRAM 4 is just gonna be pleb status versus even like eight gigabytes of SRAM 5. So now the Bun X570 Evo, there are many different X570 Buns out there. You've got some that are just, they've got more features than you actually need. I mean, sesame seeds, right? Poppy seeds. Do you like it toasted? Do you like it? toasted with butter or just toasted for crispiness? Do you like to actually put it on the same grill as your uh, Cal 570G? Because then you actually absorb a lot of those flavors. And so then what's happening is you're getting a nice, uh, almost like an all-in-one happening there. I personally am more into a wheat X570, but if you're into more of a, like a ROG or even now, who would have thought, you know, an EVGA dark. Now the FR1000 GP external storage. The problem is it only becomes external after it's been fully processed. And the processing time is gonna depend on the user. There's some downtime that happens there because if you have cores dedicated to that much storage, then everything else kind of takes a hit. Your performance drops as a whole, you notice your utilization goes up and your motivation goes down. But that's fine because usually if you just put your PC in a sleep state for a while, everything works itself out. <laughs> okay, so this next one here is another really awesome DIY. Um, this is from Andrew Jer Jarman. Jarman. He says, here's his wall-mounted custom, or his wall-mounted custom frame with some amazing Blade Runner inspired, inspired artwork by a friend of his. He designed it in 3D Builder with stock images. So we'll start with 3D Builder. This is this is his vision. And you can see here the wall mount. Now, a wall-mounted PC is something I've not personally built. And the reason for that is because there's a couple things that keep me from doing it. One, um, airflow. It's important to have airflow flowing over the parts. Even if you're water cooling your motherboard or your CPU, as you can see here, 
You clearly have heat sinks that are on the chipset. You have heat sinks that are on the VRMs. And if you don't have any airflow moving over those, those can start to, it's sure they'll radiate, especially when they're, they're exposed. But those are designed to get cooling through airflow that happens in a chassis. So when it's wall mounted, you don't get that. That's my only concern with something like this. Um, but I do like that he planned it all out on this uh, sort of a SketchUp uh, or 3D Builder software. Now, let's go work our way backwards here before I show you the other stuff. Here's the way it looks from the front. Clearly, he's got Samsung Nano or Neo G9. We did a review of that not that long ago. It is so comically curved when you look at it from this angle. From the front, it's not so bad. But when you look down, that 1000R curve, it just becomes so obvious. I love the vaporware or vaporwave kind of a color scheme. I've never uh, done anything with um, Blade Runner. So I don't, I've never played or watched or whatever they have for the series. So this is all new to me in terms of the concept. It's clearly based on LAPD in the future at some point. So compared to his CAD, you can see everything kind of worked out, which makes sense because he had everything measured. And as long as he was able to have the measurements right of his reservoir and pump right here, uh, this is his RTX 3090 Founders Edition with block on it. He's got his radiators. You can see everything worked out well. So he's got his pass-throughs happening here to the back side. I'm the kind of person that probably would have had them facing forward so I could have more tubing show on the front side. You can see the very few tubes show here. That's because the real star here is the artwork done for the uh, Blade Runner style on the front. Let's talk about the way he built this because that's one of the major things that keeps me from wanting to do wall mount. Is like, how do you mount it? Like, what do you use to make it out of? And it was such a just aha, mind blown, I'm an idiot who was overthinking this to see the way he did it, specifically because I've used this exact hardware in so many things, because one of the things I've always done for my friends is scroll to the right damn picture, is use TV mounts. They're designed to hold heavy stuff already, big screen TVs and stuff, big flat screens. So he just used pass-through hardware, bolt hardware here, probably countersunk the bolt so it doesn't stick out and either used a cap to refill it or just the, the, the wrap, as you can see, is going right over it. He just drilled holes where everything needed to come through and he labeled it in and out so he knows where everything's going. What looks funky, like coming off all these holes, that's just where he had to slice the wrap to just cleanly go in like round holes. Here's his screws just mounting everything down to it. Same thing with the block right here. Um, this is clearly where fittings would go for the motherboard. There's no motherboard in here at the moment, but there's the 24 pin, there's the eight pin, or at least the motherboard's on there, but the fittings are not. He has this L-shaped shelf right here that the power supply is just sitting on. It's so simple. It's just MDF. Unbelievably simple the way he did this, that it made me go, you know, I should do a wall mounted PC, but I don't know where I'd put it. I guess I could put it in the office. So, uh, Andrew, Absolutely phenomenal build there. I love it. I love the color scheme. I'm a huge fan of Vaporwave, which obviously you incorporated here. I don't, I don't know if that's the way Blade Runner is, but I like it. If it's got that 80s cyberpunk kind of a thing going on, then that's a very traditional kind of 80s look. It was almost as creative though as Mason's Comprinter 2. I had to, I had to do this. It already has 86 likes in a reply to my post, and that means people have seen it. And when Phil and I saw this, we just started uncontrollably cracking up. It's literally a computer built into a printer. What's on the front display? That's Why what I want to know. Why is it on the floor? But Why does it have a trackball? Can it print? Can it still print? <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's a valid question. Yeah, can it print? Well, it's funny because that's technically a scanner bed, right? Because it can clearly compute. Yeah, that's that's how you you take screenshots by just closing the lid and pushing scan. <laughs> <laughs> So, so it's like, do, boop, do. Yeah. the funny thing to me is how comically small the screen is versus the like you we heard you like bezel all right so that's it for this uh this month's jay what do you think uh, this one was probably long and had a lot of stuff going on but i wanted to kind of show you all over the spectrum there so if you've got any sort of interesting cool or just different type of PC tower or setup, make sure you're following us on uh, Twitter because that is where we always do these things. So without further ado, let's go and get out of here, guys. Don't forget about our GPU giveaway. You'll find a link to it down in the description below. We're giving away three graphics cards to, well, one graphics card to three different winners. Make sure I say that properly. <laughs> three different graphics cards, one to each pe uh, person. Wow, how did I say that? <laughs> So we're giving away three different graphics cards to three different uh, lucky people worldwide. You can learn all about that in the description below. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one.